everyone, and welcome ladies and gentlemen to Knuckles Chaonix on the Sega Mega Drive 32X. I am one more sheep yet again, and this is a unique game because this is technically Knuckles' own spin-off game. This is the first game in the Sonic series to really be a true spin-off without Sonic being in the game whatsoever. That is right, Sonic is nowhere to be seen in this one, despite Mel Sonic being on screen right now. This is Chaotix featuring Knuckles the Echidna. Welcome to the next level in a 32-bit world. And uh, this is a very unique Sonic the Hedgehog game, and it does use the basic formula that we've known, you know, we've grown to expect throughout the years with Sonic the Hedgehog. But uh, it has a very unique difference in terms of how it plays. As you can tell, Knuckles by here is holding a ring. That ring's gonna be coming into play fairly shortly into the game, but to start things off, the main basic controls are as you'd expect. You move forward, you can still jump, you can still do the spin dash, and Knuckles still has his glide and climbing abilities from back in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. Eggman? I wonder what he's doing here. Hmm. And there we go, meet Espio. Now this is the major gimmick with this game, folks. We are going to be tethered to a partner at all times. This is the first time a partner system has been properly introduced into a Sonic game, I do believe. And uh, this is the last time, but this is the only time it's really done in quite this style. At all times throughout this game, we're going to be tethered to a partner by using these two rings. And as you can tell, there's a little sparkly trail between the rings that indicates, you know, the in the in-between points of you and your partner. And uh, this is a co-op platformer, folks. This is a co-op Sonic game. You can actually get your friends. You can play it with your friends. You don't have to play this in single player. Why am I playing this in single player? Because I am... I am... I'm a lonely person with no friends! <laughs> no, no, I just didn't want to drag my friends into uh, recording this. Like, that, the only time I ever drag my friends into recording Sonic games is... Very rarely, because I'm the only real Sonic fan out of them, and none of them really like Sonic games. But, I have to say, this game is probably one of those rare, obscure titles in the series that not many people actually got to play, unless they emulated it, because... Like I said at the beginning, this is released on the Sega Mega 32X, and for those of you who don't know the Mega 32X, you're not missing out on much. The, 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 go the console was an atrocity. It was awful. <laughs> There's like two good games on there, like this and Star Wars. So, uh, yeah, if you get a chance, never buy a 32X. It's not worth the money. Trust me on that. It's not worth the money. And not many people knew about it, but it was one of the add-ons for the Mega Drive that's actually caused a very big downward spiral in terms of Sega, because Sega released the 32X and the Mega CD, and uh, people just stopped losing, you know, they, people just stopped trusting them after those two systems, you know? Shame, because the Sega Saturn and the Sre Sega Dreamcast are absolutely godlike machines, but uh, I digress. More so the Dreamcast than the Saturn. The Dreamcast was uh, the ultimate gaming machine. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not being a fanboy at all, that's actually what it says on the box. <laughs> but anyway, like I said, we are tethered to another character at all times during the course of this game, and we can actually press the B button if we want, and we can actually cause the other character to hold in place. And we're going to need to manipulate this in order to manipulate the physics, because as you can probably guess by me jumping off the spring, the physics are a little bit wacky. They're a little bit hard to get a hold of. And whenever we do hold the... Uh, a partner in place, we can as well pick him up by pressing the C button, not C, the B button again, if we are close to him. So we can actually use him as a projectile, we can throw him places, and there's loads of platforming that can be... There's loads of platforming that can be done just by picking up your partner and chucking him, and you can use him as a weapon, you can... You know, there's, there's a lot you can actually do with this gameplay style. The only issue with this gameplay style is it does get a bit... Ooh all over the place. It's very dizzying. Is that the word? Dizzying? So uh, just be prepared. We are going to be flip-flopping between areas constantly during the course of this playthrough. We're going to be fighting the physics for the most part. And I, this is one of my lesser liked classic Sonic games. Is it a bad game? No. I, I don't think it's a bad game at all. I just think it's definitely a boring one. It's This is one of those games that outweighs its welcome because I'll get into the main reasons why as we actually get into the playthrough, because we're still in the first zone, you know, we're still in the introduction sequence. And this introduction sequence is easy as pie, easy as cake. There's no enemies to speak of, there's nothing that can kill you. 
Like, I, don't, I physically do not think you can even get hurt in this zone, so this is just here to get you used to the controls, get you used to the mechanics and uh, all that jazz. I also, every character, that's right, every character, there's multiple characters in this game, has a new, their own unique way to jump up walls and stuff, so there is that. But of course, in traditional Sonic the Hedgehog fashion, whenever we get 50 rings and we beat a zone, we can access a special zone. Ha! Huh, so the Chaos Emeralds are in this, you might be wondering? No. Not a single Chaos Emerald are in this game. However, instead, we do have to collect the six... Six? I think it's six. Chaos rings from each of these special zones. So yeah, and each of these special zones, they're basically... They're basically these uh, weird psychedelic walkways that you need to tra traverse across, collecting blue spheres in the progress. And I know a large number of people do not like these special zones because a lot of people find them really difficult to either control and really tricky. I don't find them that bad. I find them quite fun. They're, they are really entertaining for what they are. The only kind of issue I sort of have with these sort of special zones are they tend to drag on a little bit. And of course, depth perception isn't the best, because this is this is early 3D, you know, folks. This is when 3D was becoming a new thing. Of course, I say that, but the sixth stand was pretty much just around the corner after this game, but... Uh, actually, wait, I, was it out I think the Sega Sand was out roughly the same time now, think about it. Either way, this was impressive considering the console it was it's initially running off. Because the 32X, like I said, is it's just an add-on for the Mega Drive. You know, it's it's not its own unique console like it was like I think it was originally going to be. Uh, I don't know. Sega's hardware history is a little bit confusing. There's a lot of ifs and ifs and buts about the their console history in the past. But uh, yeah, we're gonna you gotta go through all these, gotta collect all of the blue spheres and collect the chaos rings. What can I say? And as you can tell, there's a ring timer at the top left of the screen. The rings we have when we enter each special stage is our time limit for the special zones. So the rings will count down every second. If you run out of rings, bye bye. You can't you can't finish the special zone. And obviously, if you fall into pits, you can't finish the special zone either. So. Uh, just have to watch out. The first one's very easy. It just gets you used to the whole uh, idea of things. What can I say? But of course, now we have access to a player select screen. This is unique to this game and... Well, not unique to this game. Out of the classic series, it's unique to this game, I suppose. And we can choose between Charmy, Vector, Espio. Three characters that will be returning. And Mighty the Armadillo, yet again. Some of you might remember him from such classics as Sega Sonic the Hedgehog. Anyway, we are currently actually in New Tragic High Zone. This is the main location we're going to be throughout the course of this game. This is the main island that this game takes place. I'll talk more about the plot in the second part of the game, but for now, let's just continue moving onwards. And we actually need to pick a partner as well before we actually enter each of the zones. The partner is actually picked by using this crane minigame. You sort of manipulate the crane left and right, and then press the jump button when you want to select a guy. So now I select Vector, and boom! So, what's the deal with Mighty? Well, Mighty the Armadillo in this game, he's basically Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> There's no ifs and, uh, and buts about it, he's basically Sonic the Hedgehog. And while I said Sonic the Hedgehog isn't in this game, he isn't. He's not here. He's nowhere to be seen. So instead, we have Mighty filling in for him as a... Uh, because I don't know I, I don't know what Mighty's doing here. Maybe he just sort of ran across the Chaotix crew or something. Because he's technically not part of the Chaotix, you know, folks. Like, a common misconception is... not. Mighty the Arm Dill is actually part of the crew called the Chaotix, which are the... I'm gonna say they are the main protagonists of, the, of this game, even though Knuckles is the main title guy. I believe that's just to sell, the copy, sell more copies of the game, because more people are gonna pick up a Chaotix. A game that says Knuckles, as opposed to a game that just says Chaotix, aren't they? But, uh, yeah, these are the main guys in the games, and uh, we're gonna be seeing these guys much later down the line in the Sonic franchise when we get to Sonic Heroes. But Mighty, this is Mighty's everlast appearance, at least at the time of this recording. God knows what Sega could do in the meantime, so... Yeah, this is the last time we're ever going to see Mighty the Armadillo in the Sonic franchise, so it's kind of good he gets a bit more of a spotlight role, what can I say? But of course, like I said, he's basically Sonic. He's a clone copy of Sonic, he has Sonic's moves, he has his spin dash, he has his jump. But he also has the ability to climb up walls. If you're playing as Mighty and you jump up on a wall, if you press the C button, you can actually Mega Man X your way up the wall ultra quick. What do I mean Mega Man X my way up the wall? Well, basically you can jump off one wall constantly and 
He's actually one of the best characters for climbing up walls, that's what I'm gonna say. And every single character, they, they can all climb up walls in some way, shape or form. I'm gonna be talking over their abilities as we get through further with the playthrough, because I will be talking about every character. I will be showing off every character, because uh, I'm a nice guy, what can I say? But yeah, these special zones, they do take a little bit of getting used to. The controls, though, are really precise. Let's, I think that's one of the big issues a lot of people have with, uh, with the controls in this special zone, because it can be really precise. It's, if you press left, you're instantaneously going to go left. It's like the Sonic, o Sonic 06 issue. But, uh, you know, I don't have too much of a trouble with it. Just continue dodging all the things, avoiding the spike balls. Need, obviously, if you hit the spike balls, you're gonna lose rings. Don't hit the spike balls if you want to stay in these special zones. What can I tell ya? And of course, if you hit bumpers, you will be bounced backwards. And we're gonna actually be making use of that to our advantage later down the line inside each of these special zones. And, uh, yeah. I like this game. What can I say? It's, 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 <laughs> it's not the best game in the world, but it's not the worst game in the world. It just sort of drags a lot longer than it needs to. But, uh, yeah. Although I do kind of like the gravity mechanic that uh, they got going on with these special zones. I kind of... I don't know. When I play this, I always sort of think back to Sonic Extreme. Like, maybe this is what fueled the idea of Sonic Extreme's gravity mechanics early in production. I don't know. Shame that game never got released, considering they actually have <laughs> playable prototypes out now that we can play if we really want to. I may show them off at some point, just because, you know, why not? Why not? But, uh, yeah, I digress. And also, as you can tell at the top of the screen, we have to collect a certain number of blue spheres, it's obvious. Now, we can actually collect more blue spheres than are necessary, but we don't get any bonuses for it. It's, uh, we just can if we want. Probably give us something to do if we're looping through the stage multiple times. Because if you don't get the enough amount of uh, blue spheres by the end of a stage, then you will run, you will be able to loop through the level until you collect those blue spheres. Collect the Chaos Rim, Bob's your uncle. Chaos Rim? Chaos Ring, Bob's your uncle, and that's all there is to it. But with that, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for the first part. So thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. Don't be sheepish. And I'll catch you all next time when we uh, start to dig into the proper nitty gritty of the game. See you after. Hope you all enjoyed. Bye!